In this video, I'd like to talk about even and odd mode analysis and how we apply that to an understanding of balance and the way they work. Uh, I think even and odd modes are absolutely crucial to understand if you're making any kind of a circuit using balance. Uh, mixers, uh, push push frequency multipliers, uh, anything like that. Uh, you need to understand how they behave, not only for the odd mode, but for the even mode, because that's crucial to getting the performance that you need. So let's start at the computer here and take a look at even and odd modes, talk about what they are and what you can do with them. Okay, so how does this work? Let's take a look at this um, figure, which illustrates it, I think, fairly well. This block over here can be anything, any kind of circuit, although there's really no point in applying even an odd mode analysis unless you can use the symmetries of the circuit to uh, simplify things. So this might have some symmetries in it, but I'm not going to make any limitations on the number of ports, uh, what's input, what's output, or anything like that. Okay, so this is based simply on linearity. This has to be a linear circuit, and of course there's nothing more linear in the world than a chunk of metal stuck onto a piece of a substrate. So that's really the only restriction. We're going to say this. We can decompose this source into an even mode excitation where we have plus V over 2 and plus V over 2, and an odd mode excitation where we have plus V over 2 and minus V over 2. Now, think about a minute. Linearity requires that the sum of the responses to those two excitations has to be the same as the response to the sum of the sources. I'll say that again. You sum the sources, you sum the responses, that will be the response to this circuit, as it turns out, because this is the sum of the sources, right? If I take these sources and add them up, I will get this minus v over 2 and plus v over 2 gives you 0 over here, plus v over 2 and plus v over 2 gives you v over here. So the sum of the sources is the source that we want. The sum of the responses has got to be the response that we want. That's how it all works. Okay, so let's go to another circuit and apply it to something so you can see how useful it is. Here's our Wilkinson power divider from the first video. And uh, as you remember, it consists of two quarter wavelength transmission lines, which have the characteristic convenience the Z0 square roots of two, where Z0 is the port terminations. It also has a resistor here that's 2Z0. Now in that video, I kind of punted on the subject of this resistor, what it does and how it works. But you can use even an odd mode analysis to show that very simply. So let's take this source and decompose it again into the even mode sources here and the odd mode sources over here. So we sum those, we'll get this excitation. And of course we sum the, these two sources and we'll get nothing over here, which is what we have. Okay, now let's look at this for a minute. With an even mode excitation, you're going to have the same voltages along each of these transmission lines, which means you're going to have the same voltage at this end so any connection up here between the two is not going to have any current in it. Uh, there's going to be no current between these two, so we can break them. And we then terminate each one of these lines with 2z0. Imagine connecting these in parallel. Again, you've got your z0 termination again. Uh, by the same token, this resistor, the 2z0 resistor, isn't going to have any voltage across it. So we can just forget about it, too. And that breaks the circuit into two pieces. So far, so good. We need only analyze one half of it. Now, with 2z0 here and this characteristic impedance, this becomes a quarter wave transformer. And if you work it out, the input impedance at this point will be just z0. So this whole circuit turns out to be nothing more than this. And if you can't analyze this, you really have no business being in electrical engineering, right? Okay, now what about the odd mode circuit? Well, with the odd mode, we're exciting this symmetrical circuit with plus V over two and minus V over two. 
So the voltages along these lines will be zero. At, I'm sorry, they will be negative of each other everywhere. And so when they reach this point, they'll cancel and there will be zero voltage there. So that makes what we call a virtual ground. You could ground this point, wouldn't make any difference. So that then turns these transmission lines into quarter wave short circuited stubs. And as we all know, the input impedance looking into a quarter wave shorted stub is going to be an open circuit. So you can just forget about the transmission lines. And this over here is what you're left with. And I will again state you should have no trouble whatsoever analyzing this circuit. So you sum the results of this analysis with the results of this analysis, and that will give you the voltages and currents in the original circuit. It has to. And if you do that, you will find then that there is no voltage across Z0. So Z0 is isolated. And that is why these two ports are isolated in a Wilkinson power divider. Now, just to give you a little preview of coming attractions when we talk about hybrids, it turns out that this Wilkinson power divider can actually be viewed as a 180 degree hybrid. Um, you've got a little hint here because you can excite this port. This is isolated and you'll get, turns out you'll get half the power here. Uh, you'll just have to take my word for that right now. And the power is divided between this resistor and this one over here. So it's actually dividing power in this direction too. And when you look at the way it all works, it turns out to be equivalent to a 180 degree hybrid where this resistor, the terminals of this resistor are the fourth port. Um, it's a floating port for sure, but it is still a port. And with that recognition, this becomes uh, a 180 degree hybrid. Okay, now let's take a look at uh, a couple of different balance and take a look at their properties. Let's start with a transformer. Transformer turns out to be an ideal balance. If I excite a transformer from this end, I get a perfect odd mode at the terminals. So that's great. Now, how does the transformer behave uh, in response to an even mode excitation at its output? Well, that gets a little bit more interesting. So we'll use this element here, and this is simply an element that separates the odd mode from the even mode. So at this port, we get um, the odd mode or the differential mode, as it's sometimes called, and this part we get the uh, even mode or the common mode as it's sometimes called. So uh, if we excite this port, we'll get a pure differential mode. If we excite this port, we'll get a pure common or even mode. So let's see what happens when we run that. <clears throat> well, you can see for the port two, which is the uh, odd mode, we have a nice impedance because we're just passing the signal through the transformer and seeing this uh, termination over here. For the even mode, however, we've got an open circuit because if you excite a transformer in an even mode, the transformer essentially ceases to exist. These terminals become a short circuit. And so we're looking at uh, the center tap. The center tap is open circuited, so you see an open circuit. And conversely, if I were to ground that center tap, I'll run this again, you'll see the even mode uh, or the balance shows in a short circuit to even mode excitation. So that's the characteristic of this particular balance. Now that's important because the way that the balance responds to even mode excitation has a big effect on how well your circuit works. In balance mixers, for example, all of these things that the balance mixer is supposed to reject, uh, even mode intermodulation products, it's supposed to have perfect RF to LO, uh, isolation, all that stuff, it does only because the balance has very good even mode properties. If the balance does not have good even mode properties, you will not get those um, uh, rejections, or at least you won't get what you expect for them. So the way the balance works is extremely important, and the way a lot of circuits work. The same thing happens for power amplifiers, say push-push power amplifiers, and so on. 
the um, even mode properties of the Balin are extremely important. So what are the even mode properties of various kinds of Balins? Well, it turns out most microwave Balins look like an open circuit, the even mode excitation, which is unfortunately what you usually don't want. You would like to see a short circuit to even mode excitation. So it's very important to understand that and to make sure you work around it if you can when you're designing a mixer or, or any circuit using a ballon. Okay, now let's take a look at another type of ballon, a little bit more complicated, but not much. This is a parallel strip ballon. You, may, you can make a ballon by uh, taking a set of coupled lines and hooking it up this way. And you can hope and pray that you'll get a pure odd mode at the output of this. Uh, turns out you won't exactly. You'll get a combination of an even and an odd mode. And um, it's very difficult with this kind of ballon to get a really good, uh, get really good even mode performance. Let's show you why. Okay. So here's the impedances. Again, we are looking at this through this mm conv element. Uh, that's incidentally, that's supposed to be a, a converter between uh, mixed mode S parameters and ordinary S parameters. If you don't know what mixed mode S parameters are, don't worry, nobody else does either. So uh, we'll just go from there. Well, of course, if you look at this, I've made these impedances pretty unrealistic. The odd mode impedance of 25 ohms is not bad, but 1,000 ohm even mode impedance, that'll never happen. But you do get pretty good performance if you could make that happen. So let's tune this and make this a little bit more realistic. Um, as I bring the even mode impedance down to something more like what you're like to see, let's say 127 ohms, <laughs> you can see that um, this is far and away not an open circuit. It's also not a short circuit, which as I said earlier, you would like to see, uh, but it's not really what you would want at all. And it gets worse and worse as that impedance gets lower. Uh, when you make a set of coupled lines like this, getting 25 ohms odd mode impedance and something around 100 even mode impedance is realistic, much higher than that. It depends a lot on the transmission medium, but you probably can't do it. So uh, let's take a look at the modes. And here is transmission from the input through the uh, odd mode output and through the even mode output. This is the odd mode output. You've got about a dB loss. And that's because a lot of that input is coming out as an even mode. Uh, so this is what you're seeing. It's only seven dB down, which kind of is not very good. Why is that? Well, the even mode is dominated by the capacitance between these strips and the ground plane. The even mode largely propagates between these strips and the ground plane while the odd mode propagates between the strips. So if you have significant capacitance between the strips and the ground, you're going to end up with a low even mode impedance and a low even mode impedance, as you can see here, means uh, it doesn't work very well. And that's a fundamental problem with parallel strip balance. Now, they are still used, but they're usually done in a, um, suspended substrate medium. And you'll see these in mixers a lot. These little commercial mixers that you can get are often uh, made with parallel strip balance. And in those cases, there's one strip on top of the substrate and one under it, and there's a good air gap between the strips and the ground. That minimizes the capacitance between those strips and the ground plane and maximizes the capacitance between the strips. So you get a low even mode impedance or the even mode impedance you want and a high, pardon me, low odd mode impedance for the odd mode impedance you want and a high even mode impedance. And very often these will actually be made on five mil composite substrates. And uh, that allows the strips to be very narrow and it 
uh, reduces the capacitance to ground, and therefore you get a higher even mode impedance. And when you do that, you can kind of get by with them. Uh, you can, and they, they, they do work well enough. They're not great, but they work well enough. Okay, now let's take a look at the Marchand ballon, another kind of ballon, which is actually one of my favorite types of ballons. Okay, here is one type of Marchand ballon. You can see what it consists of. Um, it's made on a suspended substrate, and it has strips on the top of the substrate, uh, one end of which is connected to the input, the other end is just open-circuited, and there are strips on the bottom of the substrate right underneath those top strips, and the ends of those are grounded, and the output is in the middle. Uh, those strips are a quarter wavelength long, so the whole thing is a half a wavelength long. It's a center frequency. Uh, this actually works pretty well, and these are used in commercial mixers and other circuits quite a bit. The only real problem with these is that um, the even mode is dominated, as I've said before, by the capacitance between the strip and the housing. The odd mode is determined by the capacitance between the two strips. So you have uh, the dielectric between the strips, which helps you get a lower odd mode impedance, and the uh, air gap allows for a higher even mode impedance. But because the uh, odd mode propagates largely between the strips in the substrate, it has a lower phase velocity than the even mode. And that difference in phase velocity actually becomes something of a problem, and it affects the performance. Okay, so the next question, of course, is how do you design one of these? And uh, I could come up with some sort of super clever academic way to do that, but in all honesty, the easiest, the most effective and quickest way to do this is just to put it in the computer and start tweaking. Uh, you know what you're trying to do, right? You're trying to get a certain uh, odd mode impedance between the balance. We'll talk about what that should be in a little bit. And you're trying to uh, keep the even mode impedance as high as possible. That means make the strips narrow and uh, keep the housing uh, relatively large, if you can do it, consistent with not getting spurious modes and that sort of thing. And uh, just put it on the computer and tweak. It's the easiest and fastest way to do it. Okay, now let's take a look at this on the computer. Here we have a Marchand ballon and our um, mode converter as well. Um, I've selected some impedances for this and I've tweaked it a little bit using the tuner. Uh, I assume that we could get something like a couple of hundred, where is it, even mode impedance of a couple hundred ohms. Odd mode turns out to be about a little under 30, and you can see the rest of them here. Now this load impedance looks a little high. This is one of the things you do have to adjust while you're designing the ballon. It's a degree of freedom for the design. Um, it looks a little high because this mode converter actually gives you half that impedance at each of these points, so you have the total impedance between them. Uh, that's a little bit misleading. So what you're really seeing at each of these terminals is something like um, uh, 50 ohms to ground. And you can see the performance over here. Let me open the tuner for a minute. And you can see how easy it is to tune it. We can adjust the length. That pretty much just scales it in frequency. We'll center it at about 7.5 gigahertz. And the load impedance here will have a big effect on the uh, input return loss, big surprise. And the even and odd mode impedances are uh, things you can adjust to optimize it also. Notice that if I were to take this uh, even mode impedance and move it down here, let's say we could only get a much lower even mode impedance, when I uh, retweak everything, you'll notice that this line, which is the even mode output, uh, doesn't look nearly so good. I will move this a little higher so you can see that again. So there it is. It's much better. Now, one of the nice things about the Marchand Ballon is it's much, much more tolerant of low even mode impedance than other kinds of ballons, like, for example, the parallel strip ballon. So that's one thing to keep in mind when you're deciding on a ballon for whatever it is you're designing. Um, Marchand, as I said, is one of my favorites for that reason. And uh, because it is more tolerant of uh, low even mode impedances, 
we will see in a minute that uh, it's very good for a planar ballon. And planar ballons in mixers are something that's kind of hard to come up with most of the time, but the Marchand works very well for that. Okay, this video is getting a little bit long, but I still wanted to show you how we design and create a planar Marchand ballon. Here's one. It's a layout rendering straight out of Microwave Office's layout tool. And you can see the input over here, 50 ohm input. This is a monolithic circuit, obviously. And uh, here's the outputs over here. Uh, the grounds use two ground vias at each end. That's because we need to keep that ground inductance as low as possible. That's critical to the performance of the ballon. Uh, now, the one thing that is a little bit interesting, that you need some explanation, is you're seeing multiple lines here. There's three lines. And the output is connected to the two outer lines, and the input is connected to the central line. We do that because there isn't enough capacitance between two strips in planar form like this to get a decent odd mode impedance. So instead, we take this, one of these lines, in this case the one that's connected to the output, and we split it into two lines. Now this way we have two edges that are next to each other instead of just one. And that gives you a lot more coupling, a lot more capacitance, and uh, a reasonable uh, odd mode impedance. Okay, before we leave the subject, I wanted to say a little bit about the models used for these multiple coupled lines. We have built into Microwave Office a, a 2D EM simulator. It will handle lines of any width, any spacing. They don't have to be symmetrical, nothing like that. They don't even have to be on the same layers in a multi-layer board. And it will analyze those things very nicely. The downside of that, the trade-off, is that it will not handle non-TEM dispersion. But in a monolithic circuit, it's so small that that's not really a problem. The good thing about these models is that they analyze very, very fast, much faster than a 2D or 2.5D EM simulator. So we can simulate the ends, the vias, and all that sort of stuff on the 2.5D uh, EM simulator. We can simulate the central part on the same simulator, but then we use the 2D EM models for the straight lengths. And that allows us to adjust those lengths very easily. You can tune those lengths almost in real time with that um, simulator. You can't do that with the 2.5D one. Well, that's enough about balance for now. We will revisit the subject uh, a little later when we talk about mixers and frequency multipliers and specific kinds of circuits.